Hello again, uh, my name is Mr. Sokowski and for this video I am going to show you how or talk about the points of how to do a hippo wing or hippo document especially for a DBQ. It could be used for the SAQ section of your AP exam but hippo is a classic form. Um, you can look this up online, this, uh, this acronym of how to actually do a quick analysis. It's good to bring this in your head when you're taking a long test. You want to have some tools in your brain to easily say I can do an analysis of anything and when you're hippoing a doc or docs um, realize that you don't have to do hippo for every doc but every doc should have some hippoing in it right like a historical context or a point of view here and um, for the DBQ section for your AP exam what really one what the ones that really pop out are intended audience I of hippo and the POV those are like the ones that really are glaring and for your AP exam for your DBQ you really want to do it with about three documents of how to really talk about those points of the intended audience and the uh, point of view of the document and how that could be something to do an analysis of it. All right, so to start off with, when you get a document, a document that they give you, you have to paraphrase, you have to kind of organize it. And once you're done with that point of doing it, which I have a longer um, section of it and like, thumbs up, subscribe, do all that jazz, guys. But in reality is, is that once you've done the paraphrasing of the, the actual document, what you really want to do is an analysis of it. And the analysis of a document is not always just with the idea of what the document's talking about, but it's a deeper understanding of what it's about, where it was placed, why the time in history was important, um, who was it intended for, what was the purpose of it, what's the point of view of it, and then if there's any outside evidence you can incorporate with it, would be perfect for the DBQ and then the LEQ, the long essay questions, all outside evidence. So it's something important to kind of encompass as a practice for you guys going forward. So what's the historical context of a document? Historical context is saying if you got a document that's within the French Revolution or the Enlightenment or something like that, then you need to say that that's the historical situation that's going around this time frame of if you get a picture of the three estates and two of the states are on top of one of them or something like that. You need to say that this is showing the context of the issues of social classes, historically speaking, during the French Revolution, leading to the actual revolution unfolding with the storming of the Bastille or something like that going forward, right? So the historical context is what's happening around in history of this document, but not talking about the document. What's era is this happening why is this important why is this looking like this what kind of little historical bubble can i put this document in okay that's the con context of it it's not the contextualization that you did in the beginning of your dbq or leq that's gone now you're saying what's happening around this actual document and this is in the meat the middle of your uh the meat i like to say like a cheeseburger or like uh the meat and potatoes this is the main part of your essay that you're writing about okay the I for an intended audience is, who is this document intended for? No one does anything really without wanting any type of purpose or intention, right? This is a little later on with purpose. So the intended audience for a letter circulating in Europe wouldn't, uh, about the issues of how the monarchy is corrupt or something like that, wouldn't necessarily be for the monarchy. Maybe it is, but maybe if it's circling around Europe, maybe or circulating around Europe, maybe it would be for the rest of the population of France. So the intended audience of this author, the audience he's writing to, who's he writing this for? If you're writing a comedy, you're writing it for people that like comedy. If you're writing a romantic novel, you're writing for people that write romance, right? I like to say to my students too, like if you are doing something geared towards, you know, like for newer things like Twitter or Facebook or something. No, Twitter, Facebook's for older people, I guess, and Twitter's kind of getting out there too. If you're doing a Twitter thing, right, like a Twitter commercial or something, who's the intended audience for a Twitter commercial? It's not me, I'm old, right? Like it's probably for a younger generation, right? So the intended audience for this commercial is for the youth, right? So it's intended, who's this document or what is this document intended for? Who's the intended audience? And if you could say, that part of it, the intention of the document or the audience that this document is geared towards, you're doing analysis that's deeper than just going over the document. You're saying this document is for this group of people. This is intended probably for this. It doesn't have to be exact, but if you can show the reader that you're doing that, that's showing deeper thought than just what the document is basically saying. 
uh, the purpose of this or what's the author's purpose what are they trying to get out of it are they trying if it's a letter to the people is it trying to get a reform is it trying to get a revolution is it trying to if it's towards the monarchies are trying to point out the corruption and get changes going that way usually people are doing things for a purpose is it for them to keep the the peasants down if it's from the monarchy towards the peasants is it them trying to say look you stay here this is your place this is tradition it's god's will blah blah blah, blah. you were brought, brought here during the french revolution and then that's why you don't question any equality or anything like that this is just the way things been so accepted like Maybe that's the purpose of the document, right? So you need to figure out what will be a purpose of it and think beyond the documents. Your teachers probably like to say that. But the purpose would be a good one. The one I really think uh, also pops out with the intended audience is this thing called the POV, the point of view of it. Now, why is this important? Is that you can say within the point of view of the document how there maybe is a bias or not a bias. So, um, for instance, if it's someone from the nobility in the French Revolution, I know I go back there a lot, someone from the nobility of the French Revolution and talking about, you know, how the people and the lower classes should be happy, how the monarchy and nobles get protection towards other countries, and they should be happy with the situation. I would say the point of view of this document is from the nobility, and it could be biased because it's their view which have the power of society. So even though it's saying everyone should be okay with this, the point of view of it is from the nobility. Hence, there is a bias in it because that person doesn't want any change, doesn't want any French Revolution happening, he wants to maintain the power. So by me saying the POV of this is from the nobility and there is bias in there, then I have a deeper analysis than just saying this guy was quoting something from his nobility and tradition and something like that. That's me going beyond the documents with my writing. It could be gender equality, it could be social equality, it could be any religious equality, it could be religious issues, it could be um, economics, it could be anything that you could think of. But remember, the point of view of it, the POV, is good to talk about because that's really deep and it's easy to pick out and point out. Usually you do the intended audience and the POV with um, more written stuff. Historical context is good for pictures. You will get a picture uh more likely than not on your dbq for sure and it's a really good one to use and also you get on your dbq you usually get one document that's really hard to fit in and that's why hippoing is really good because you can always tie things in and then uh, using sprite which i'll do another um video on is really good because you can easily just assess things kind of quickly and then group them um for whatever you need to do and then the outside evidence is anything that pertains in that time frame that wasn't mentioned in there uh, let's say if you got a French Revolution, for instance, and I never mentioned Robespierre and his, you know, reign of terror, or the guillotine, or, you know, um, the idea of, yeah, Robespierre is a really good one, how even though he's fighting for enlightenment ideologies, he's someone that's using the guillotine and terror to institute reform, that could be something you could talk about, too, so you want to say those kind of things, um, the Committee of Public Safety, you want to say people and terms, explain what the terms are, and then how it can connects to it and that's outside evidence for a dbq you need only one for a dbq remember your leq you want about four of those outside evidences and on the leq you get to pick which question you want but you need to remember four things so remembering four things but you pick whatever one you want three out of three depending on what your class is that you're watching this video and then you do the outside information uh, four of those okay so that's kind of like heart that's a little bit more trickier to do but i'll go over that in another powerpoint i mean uh, another video all right hope you enjoyed uh like subscribe all that jazz you guys are great um have a good day uh, you know take a mental break when you need to too because the stuff can be tough